Hello again everybody and welcome back. This is the fifth video in the Atmel uh, microcontroller programming series and in this video we're going to uh, work with interrupts. So let's dive right in. So G-I-T-H-U-B-M-I-C-R-O-C-O-N, microcontrollers and more. And take the spaces out and that will take us to here. And then we're going to choose repositories when it comes up. And then we're going to choose uh, Atmel Programming Tutorial 5 External Interrupts. And uh, we have three example programs today. Button Press with Lag. Oh, we're going to find that one won't, won't work so well, but that's okay. We'll get to that in a minute. And then we have uh, Int Pin Interrupt. And that allows us to configure an interrupt on any of the interrupt pins. And then we have Any Pin Interrupt, which allows us to uh, configure an interrupt on any of the pins. So uh, let's first start with the circuit here. So we'll go ahead and save that to the desktop. And desktop, yep, there we go. And save. And just take a second to download. And this is a pretty straightforward circuit here. So um, this uh, connector for the um, programmer is the same as before. And then the power and ground for the chip are the same as before. And then on pin 27 and 28, we have a LED with, of course, a matching resistor to limit current. And then on pin 4 we have a switch and the power supply is the same as in the previous program. So that's a pretty straightforward circuit. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to pause for just a second, breadboard the circuit and get the picture in picture going. Okay, so we're all set with our circuit here. So uh, let's take a look at our first program today and we're going to find this isn't going to work out so well and we'll explain why momentarily. So button press with lag and raw and then we're going to fire up uh, Atmel Studio and I'm going to swing this over to the other screen to copy and paste out of it just a moment while Atmel Studio opens for us. And there we go, Atmel Studio started up so now we can exit the start page, go to file new project and then we're going to paste in the name there, button press with lag, GCC C executable project, and our chip of course is the 328P. And we're going to choose that, and once it comes up we'll go ahead and rename main.c. And so there we go, right click here and choose rename and paste, and then we can close this window for the moment. Then we're going to copy and paste in the code, and there we are. So. Uh, control M, Control P. So the intent, uh, we can get rid of these red underlines uh, momentarily, but let's take a quick look at the intent of the program here. So we have a switch on uh, PD2, which is pin 4 as we noted. So then uh, the LED on PC4, that is pin 27, is going to cycle via de a delay in main. And then the LED on pin 5, that's PC28, is going to respond to a button press, sort of. It's actually not going to work very well. So uh, this here is the same as the previous programs. We have our FCPU uh, definition there, and then we have our two usual includes. And then we have our uh, two usual bit, uh, bit is set and bit is clear macros. And uh, here we are into the program. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, set up our data direction register for PD2 to make that uh, an input. And then we're going to set the pull-up resistor for PD2. Then we're going to set PC4 and 5 to be output. Then we're going to jump into our infinite while loop here. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to toggle the LED on PC4. Then we're going to delay one and a half seconds. And then we're going to execute this code here. Whoops copy and pasting concern with the spacing there. So uh, what we're going to do is if the switch is pressed, we're going to turn the PC LED 5, uh, PC5 LED on, or if the switch is not pressed, we're going to turn the uh, PC5 LED off. So now we're going to go ahead and press Control F5, and I just realized I did not plug in the battery yet, so let's go ahead and do that. And it's going to ask us to pick up Programmer, of course, as well. And so now we're going to choose continue, and then Atmel ICE, and ISP, and then control F5 again. And there we go, so the program's now on the chip. Okay, so you can see the one LED is cycling, and we would expect, if we didn't know anything about interrupts, that as we press the switch, the other LED would turn either on or off when we have the switch down. As you can see, it's not responding at all. Now, if I hold the button down, such that I'm on the button when the LED is being toggled, you'll notice it responds. But if I do it in between, uh, it won't. And what's the reason for that? Well, the reason, of course, is because we did not use interrupts in our program. What's happening here is, and again, we can get rid of those red underlines by simply opening io.h and back to button press lag with lag.c. So what's happening here is when we get into our while loop, for this second and a half that we're delaying, the chip is unable to respond to the button press. And in any kind of production environment, obviously that would not be remotely acceptable. So um, we have the second two programs today that we're going to look at, which are going to remedy that. So first let's do uh, int pin interrupt.c. And 
if we take a look at the pinout for the AT Mega 328P. So let's see if we go to ML Programming Tutorial uh, first, AT Mega 328P pinout, and then we'll do raw and then open. And what we're going to find is there are uh, two external interrupts here, external interrupt request 0 and external interrupt request 1 on int 0 and int 1, which correspondingly are pins 4 and 5. So of course it's not an accident that when I set up the example circuit today I used pin 4 uh, for the switch. That's so we have access here to int 0. And what uh, these here are, uh, external interrupt requests, is these add, if you use int 0 or int 1, these two pins specifically, they add some specific functionality. For example, you can um, cause an interrupt to start only on a rising edge or only on a falling edge or some other conditions. Um, we're not going to get into that in too much detail. But the uh, other thing that we want to take a look at as long as we have the pinout for the chip up is we want to take a look at PC and X. That's short for pin change interrupt request. And you'll notice pretty much every uh, pin on the chip has a PC int number. So PC int 14, 16, 17, 18, 13, 12, 11, 10, down here they all do. You get the idea. So pretty much any pin we can use the pin change interrupt request. Now you can't respond to um, state changes quite as specifically, but it'll still be more than sufficient for a button press as we're going to see today. So uh, let's go back to tutorial 5 here. And here we're in uh, int pin interrupt.c. So let's go ahead and fire up Atmel Studio and then I'll choose raw and swing this over to the other screen. And just a moment while Atmel Studio fires up. Atmel Studio is up for us, so now we're going to close the start page and go to file, new uh, project, and then we're going to paste in int pin interrupt and GCC C executable. And of course, we're still using AT Mega 328P. And once that comes up, we will change the name of main.c, just another second here, there we go, main and rename, and we'll paste that in, close that, and now we're going to paste in the code, so control A, control V, control M, control P to turn off code folding. Okay, so let's first run the program to verify that it works okay for us, and then, uh, let's see, battery's still connected, and then we'll take a quick look at the code. So it's going to ask us to pick a programmer, of course, yes, we know that, at Mel ice and ISP, and control F5, and now we should find uh, that the um, one lead is cycling, but still the other lead responds very nicely to button presses. So we can uh, press and hold the button, we can press fast in succession, it doesn't really matter. Um, there we are. So we've got that working, so let's take a look at how we configure the registers to do that. So the top of the program at this point, of course, is pretty much the same, and then I'll open io.h to get rid of those red underlines. Okay, there we go. And so as we work our way down here, so we have uh, two registers to configure. The, um, of course, setting up the um, PD2 being the input and then PC4 and 5 being the output is the same. So then we have two registers to configure here. Um, EIMSK, external interrupt mask register, and EICRA, uh, external interrupt control register A. And the first six bits of EI mask are all zeros. And then the last two bits, if you're using int 0, uh, int 1 rather, you're going to make that a 1, but we're not, so we're going to make that a 0. We're using int 0, so we're going to make that a 1, as we saw in the pinout sheet earlier. So uh, there's EIMSK. And then we're going to have uh, in external interrupt control register A. So um, these two bits don't matter because we're not using int 1, we're using int 0. So then for these two bits, if we set these to 0 and 1, um, then any logical change on int 0 will generate an interrupt request. And that specifically is this interrupt request right here, int 0 vect. But first let's take a look at the rest of main. So uh, we enable interrupts, then we jump into our infinite while loop. And all we're doing in the while loop is toggling the lead that we toggle every time the delay um, finishes, and then we do the next delay. And that's going to infinitely loop, and then while that's going, any time the button is pressed, this interrupt uh, will run, and then we simply put our if statement from the previous program in here instead. And then we get a responsive button press. So uh, this will work great if you're using either of these two pins here, 4 or 5, but just suppose, for example, that we weren't using these pins, how could we get similar functionality on any of the PC interrupt pins? And that's, uh, okay, let's not close those documents for just a moment. And that is what this next program will show for us. So let's go ahead and close out of here. And then we're going to go back to here. We'll go ahead and start up ML Studio again. Now we're going to choose uh, any pin interrupt.c and then raw. 
and then swing this over to the other screen and give Atmel Studio just a moment to start up. And there we go. So now we're going to close the start page and then we're going to go to File, New, and Project. And then we're going to paste in any pin interrupt and then choose OK. And we're still using the ATmega 328P. And we can go ahead and choose that. And then when it comes up, we'll rename main.c. So there we are. Whoops. OK, there we go. Rename uh, any pin interrupt.c. Close that. Copy and paste in the code. And then we're going to control M, control P. And first, let's go ahead and, as a proof of concept, run the program, make sure it works OK. So control F5. And then it's going to tell us to pick a programmer. Yes, we know that. ISP, let's see, Atmel Ice, rather, and then Interfaces ISP, and Control F5 again. And we should get exactly the same functionality, so we can hold the button down while the lead is cycling. Uh, we can hold it down for a continuous amount of time, or we can press really quickly. It'll respond either way just fine. So there we are. So we verified operations. So now let's take a quick look at the code. So, of course, this top part here, and then where we configure the direction of the pins is the same and we're going to work with two registers but they're completely different now we're going to use PCICR and PCMSK2 and this requires a little bit of explanation so actually if we search the data sheet for PCMSK2 what we're going to find is that gets us to this section here so there's a PCMSK2 a PCMSK1 and a PCMSK0 so what are these all about what what these are is that the um all these different pins here, PC, you know, 13, 11, 12, 14, 16, etc., are grouped into three groups essentially. So um, the zero group includes PC Ant 0 through PC Ant 7, and the one group includes PC Ant 8 through PC Ant 14, and then the two group includes PC Ant 16 through PC Ant 23. So since we're in this particular case, we have our um, switch on pin 4. So therefore, we're using PC in 18. So we're using PC in 18 here, which is in group two. So bearing that in mind, as we go back to the code for PC ICR, the first five bits are going to be zero; those don't apply. And uh, the because we're in sort of the group two, we're going to set PC IE two to be a one, and then PC IE one and zero to be a zero because we're using the PC 18, which is in the group 16 through 23. And then for PCMSK2, here we pick our specific pin. So we're using PC18, so we're going to set that to a 1, and then we can set all the others to 0. So that gives us a um, PCMSK2 being set as follows. So at this point, it's relatively similar to the other um, program, of course. The PC interrupt uh, name is different since we're in group 2. It's PC2, 2 being the group, uh, and then underscore vect. So then let's take a quick look at the code. Other than that, it's very similar to the previous program. We enable interrupts, and in the main loop, we deal with the lead that we're toggling based on the delay. And then we have our same if statement in the interrupt, and that's it. So um, hopefully this was a helpful crash course in interrupts. And in the uh, next video, we're going to take a look at counters and timers. So I'll see everybody in the next one.